Welcome back, Swoopers, to another uh, Swoop interview. We're with the Collingwood AFLW captain, Steph. How are you going, Steph? Really good. Thanks for having me. I'm pretty excited about the chat. Been no. following your page, so <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you, you do so well. Much. No, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for coming on. Uh, obviously, in the lead up to the, the start of the 2021 season, uh, next Thursday against the Blues, which is going to be a huge start to, to any a huge start to any season, but especially uh, our season coming up. Yeah, that's it. I mean, like, what better way to kickstart the season by playing against our biggest rivals? But yeah, look, obviously we uh, we played them in the first ever game. Um, played them for a couple of years in the round one, then lost that sort of right, I guess, because uh, we weren't really performing. <laughs> but yeah, good to be back on the big stage, um, Icon Park, ticketed event. Um, I think the max capacity we can have is nine thousand people due to COVID, but I've no doubt it's gonna be pretty loud and pretty electric. Yeah, well, I was there at that first, uh, the first one in 2017 and, and they were turning people at the doors and stuff like that. And it was just, it was just a huge, it was a spectacle, it was a huge event. Um, but that's something that I also wanted to, to bring up. You were a Carlton fan or you probably still are a Carlton fan uh, growing up. From, you stitching from me birth. up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, hey, it popped, up, it popped up in my Twitter mentions. So um, I, had to, I had to bring it up. Yeah, the Carlton captain, Katie Lawrence, thought she'd let everyone know that I'm still... <laughs> in their foyer written on the wall. Anyway, go on. <laughs> so, uh, so what's it, it's a bit of a, it would be a bit of a surreal experience, you know, uh, barracking for a team for that long. And, and you're probably, you know, when you were younger and, and stuff like that, you know, obviously AFLW wasn't, wasn't any sort of brainchild back, you know, back then, but now you've got, you've, you can play against that, that team that you, that you followed and mm. it must just be a surreal experience. Yeah, it really is. And um, I often get asked, do I still support Carlton? And, you know, I have a bit of banter on, on the social media and Twitter and cheat. You know, Collingwood fans are just as passionate as anyone. And they really <laughs> let you know that they don't like you talking about Carlton. And I completely understand. But, you know, I was born into a Carlton supporting family, Italian background. My non nor was as passionate as anyone. And I saw them. We used to sit in the same green seats at Princess Park at Icon Park, but Princess Park every week, watch the res- under-19s, watch the reserves, watch the Blues play. And, um, yeah, so playing at Icon is really special for me. Obviously, when I wear the black and white, I'm black and white through and through. And yeah. I'm, yeah, very, very passionate about the club I play for. And I wish nothing but the best for our boys as well. Um, but, you know, obviously there is a soft spot there, I'm not going to lie, yeah. for the Blues men's team. Certainly not the women's team. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a bit of nostalgia when I get back there. And, yeah, I, I just want to do my non proud. And I know he'd be proud with me playing footy for anyone. So it yeah. happens to be in the black and white and I bloody love it. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Um, speaking of, you were, um, you were kind of a, a pioneer for the, for the women's game with playing, you know, in all the exhibition matches before the AFLW. You even captained the, the doggies, uh, right, uh, in, in a couple of years? Was yeah. There? Yeah, in their second. Yeah, so three years I think I was captain there and, um, because the first initial exhibition game was after we had a little mini draft and it was Melbourne versus Bulldogs. And that was yep. back in 2013. Um, so a mini draft, it went Melbourne pick one, Bulldogs pick two and so forth. And then we just played a game, I think it was at the G. Um, and there was really no talk about AFLW at that point. It was just, oh, hit, let's reward two clubs that invested in our program. So Sue Alberti was a big um, influence on that. Um, and yeah, just really passionate about the women's game and growing it and, you know, giving back to us. There was no talk about AFLW or a national league at that stage. So it was just yeah. sort of a, like I said, exhibition. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's showcase women's footy. And that was it. So you got together for three days, at a little camp, trained, played a game. And that was that. Yeah. And now it's just, and now it's just blown up. Like, um, I know cause I coach, uh, I coach locally and, and the girls team from when I started to now was just exploded they've got teams uh there are girls teams you know sometimes some of them have got two girls teams because there's so many that want to do the sport and you've been Mm. playing for a while with um uh diamond creek yeah 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 so i start i was a little bit different so i started when i was 17 um at diamond creek and um i think there was a youth girls competition back then so it was 2006 but um i think the youth girls might have started in 04 but i didn't know about it um so i went straight into the women's uh, women's team and um, yeah, we had one women's team and, you know, you flash forward now, like Dymo have got one of the biggest junior footy clubs um, for women, for girls. So for anywhere from under 10s all the way to up under 18s and then you've got the seniors with the reserves. So, yeah, it's booming. And, you know, I teach out in the southeast and a lot of local clubs now have, um, you know, a clear pathway for girls, which is awesome. 
and it must be it must be so good to to see as well like like one of the one of the biggest you know criticisms to 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 address the elephant in the room is that you know the the women's you know up aren't up to the men's standards and stuff and and the rebuttal for that is that it wasn't women's footy wasn't heavily invested in for 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 so long that at, at a certain time the girls after like whatever it was under 14s they weren't allowed to play anymore that's it their, yeah you know, and look yeah and i think people forget like we're not trying to be as good as the boys exactly like they right, have different yeah. attributes to us and we understand that they're they are taller, they are fitter, they are stronger. I mean, it's they're the masculine makeup. Um, we just want to be the best athletes that we can be. And I think people forget also that we are part-time. So we are yeah. capped at sort of 15 hours a week of training. It's not a full-time gig for us. Um, so I think for what we put in and the amount of time we put in, the product's pretty good. Um, yeah. If it was full-time, like, it'd go to another level. But at this stage, it's three to four trainings a week. After yeah. hours, do your gym in your own time sometimes yeah. um, and, you know, showcase women's footy. And I think we do a pretty good job of it considering. Yep. Yeah, no, def- the definitely. Especially um, last season, the, the standard, uh, it just it just went up to another level. Like, um, you know, I was watching the, the, the Collingwood teams um, for the last couple of seasons. But then last year, I really got into it. And I don't know if it was because of Steve uh, just coming in and, and his way of coaching and the new game plan. But... Uh, just the way we were playing, it was just, it was, it was exciting. It was exciting football. Mm. And that was something that we've been lacking for, for so long, you know, and it wasn't showing obviously with the wins on the board, but you know, yeah, last year sure. we came so close to knocking off came, the kangaroos in the finals, which ultimately didn't matter cause, because of COVID, but it was so good to see the, the progress in mm. the season. Yeah, it was a big shift and it, it's no, I suppose, it's not against Wayne and his coaching in the first three years, but um, I think we just learnt a lot in those first three seasons. So you come into a competition where, you know, you've got local footballers now trying to transition into um, a professional, somewhat professional environment. Um, we're training differently and we're playing with 16 on the field. So our game plan in the first few seasons was really rigid. It was very strict and, um, you know, just trying to be, probably be a little bit too creative for where we're at. Um, yeah. And then, credit to Steve he's come in and basically he said look we've got a really good list and that's a credit to to Wayne and Jess Berger and the people f- before Steve but he said we've got a really young and exciting list like let's play to our strengths and let's just give the girls a little bit more freedom and to be fair our game plan yeah we have roles and we have structure but um, a lot of the time is play with your freedom and bring your x factor um, and I think that's really working for our group at the moment yeah uh Speaking of uh, X Factor, we do have some really good girls in the in the team, and and everyone is obviously always talking about Chloe and stuff. But now you've got a you've mm-hmm. got a Brown, and um, what what we what we kind of lacked, what I felt anyway, and you know some people were talking about as well, was our forward line. But now it seems to be a bit more bit more dynamic, and you just don't have one avenue; you've got multiple avenues to to go now. Yeah, and I think you know you, you look at Chloe; she's a an all Australian um, rising star, but she's still only 22. Um, and she ca- came in, coming off her injury. It was her first season back. So there's a lot of importance, I suppose, a weight on her shoulders to really drive that forward line last year. But, you know, forward to now, we've got her, we've got um, Sophie Alexander that's got her really, herself really, really fit. Um, we've got Abby Maloney, who we drafted, who's got some extra flair about her. Um, Michaela Can, who's as fit as anyone, really versatile. Um, so yeah, look, our forward line's really dynamic. It'll take some time. It's still very young. It's probably our most inexperienced line. Um, so I think it's important people know that, but yeah. they're, they're kids that want to learn. And James DeBono, who's our forward line coach has really got them working well together. And it's been fantastic to see girls like Chloe and Soph, um, take a step with their leadership and really drive that forward line structure. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how we go with that. Um, no expectations on them. Yeah want them to bring bring their best every week yeah no, exactly All right, i've got i've got some questions from social media some of them are really good questions so i'm gonna go through Perfect. go for it one all right so ozap dev guy on instagram asks pioneering pro- oh jesus pioneering professional sports for women and young girls growing up today what are some of the changes you've noticed whether that's in training or the style and strategies from coaches uh, day-to-day life since AFL started up until now? Do you feel like it's a big leap skills-wise and fitness-wise? Yeah, absolutely. And even looking back to from 2017 to now, um, the kids that we've drafted have come through, 
youth girls and the TAC system. So they've had a, a chance to experience what it would be like to train as a, an elite footballer where you're in the gym from age of 16 now um, with those elite habits. So for me, it's, I think the habits um, and the training has improved significantly. Um, you're no longer just a local footballer that used to, like we used to go to the pub after <laughs> our games at Diamond Creek. Like that's what we used to do. Like it's just not like that anymore. So I think the girls are getting the education about their body, their gym work, hydration, sleep. And so what it takes to actually be the best um, athlete you can be. So that's been a massive shift, um, even from 2017 to now um, in our program, having girls like Ash Braz um, and Shani Layton have played elite netball you know represented the country just watching how they go about things um even Bree Davey with being a part of the Matildas um yeah. just watching their craft and how they um go about their training and just the really small things that they do really well um that's been a massive shift in 2017 so I think the girls that are coming through the system now are really more prepared for an AFLW environment for sure yeah perfect uh Josh Stokes asks who was your favorite player growing up who did you have on your, yeah. you have on your jumper? <laughs> Pies fans won't like this. I had number <laughs> five on my jumper, not for Chris Judd, but for Andy McKay, which is okay. probably a bit strange. But um, loved the way he went about it. Um, thought he was a great leader without really having a title. Played down back, obviously, for Carlton. Um, now I get to play against his daughter, which is kind of cool. But, yeah, Andy McKay was my favourite back then. But I probably would have to say Cade Simpson because he is slightly built and I'm slightly built. <laughs> um, he's got a lot more courage than I do, but yeah, just to love, love the way he, he goes about it and how he, how he used to play in that drive of halfback. So yeah, that was my favorite growing up for sure. You donning uh, the long sleeves anytime this season? I don don the long sleeve as many times as I can in the winter, but probably way too hot in the summer. But yeah, I'm not opposed to a longy. I think I wore the longy all of the 19 VFLW seasons. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, it, to be fair, I actually think it's colder because when it rains, it just holds the water. Oh, so would, I don't yeah, know if there's 100%. any benefit to it, but you stand out. Um, yeah, you stand out and, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another one from, from Oz Dev guy. He says, does knowing your matches are being aired on TV impact how you and your teammates play at any level, from going from, you know, local stuff? Yeah, I reckon some girls probably put a bit more effort in, you know, put a bit of fake tan on and <laughs> um, make sure that, nah, look, to be fair, I think the crowd noise, like that lockout game, not lockdown, lockout game against Carlton in 2017, it was so loud. Like you literally couldn't yeah. communicate with people. Um, like, you know, you're on TV. It doesn't change how you play. Obviously, the more inexperienced girls, you know, could play on their nerves a little bit. And, you know, it's something we actually spoke about with our win against North on the weekend in a practice match. Like it was great to get the win, but it's just a practice match. Um, we'll take a lot out of it, a lot of positives, but our kids weren't exposed to a crowd, you know, yeah. there wasn't on TV. There wasn't that extra pressure. There's certainly a little, an element of pressure that comes with it. But I suppose our job as leaders is to ensure that they're calm, um, just focus on footy um, yeah. and yeah, do the basics right. So yeah, we'll, we'll continue to, to monitor that and look after them in that sense. Exactly. Uh, so the last one here uh, from Alex Barker on Twitter. What are the biggest structural changes you would make to the AFLW competition in order to strengthen it for the long term? I would personally, just before you jump in, uh, mm. is I, I, don't, I, I, I don't like how the teams aren't versing, you know, you're not versing every single, every single team. And I've got the same yep. gripe with AFL with the men's. It's not going to be fair until you verse every single team twice, you know, and it's probably easier to verse every single every team twice with the women's because there's less uh, teams, but that would be yep. one of my big structural changes. No conferences yeah, you know, think, and stuff like that. And Yeah, well, I think, well, obviously the conference is, is scratched this year, yeah. which is great. So, um, because I think we saw last year that, you know, our conference, Conference B was, you know, a lot stronger than Conference A. It's just the way it panned yeah. out. Um, look, in an ideal world, we'd play everybody at least once. That's 13 games with finals. Um, I think that's... You know, not something that's too far-fetched. Um, in our CBA, though, I think we've got another year of 10 and 3. So 10 weeks and three finals. That's the final year next year. Um, and, you know, we want every every club represented. So, you know, Hawthorne and, and Essendon yeah. want to throw their hat in the ring in the coming years. Port Adelaide, Sydney and that. So, well, that's, yeah, they're, they're the four. So, 
Um, you know, ideally every team, every AFL team would have an AFLW team um, and you play each other once. That's the dream. Yeah. I think they were talking about that happening in 2030. Obviously, I'll be done Jesus by then. But Christ. Yeah, that, that's how I, I'd love to play everybody once. I agree with you. I mean, yeah. there's only, there's so much change within the team every year. So like girl, the player movement's pretty big in our yeah, league. And it is, yeah. to then judge a team on, like, for example, Adelaide, had a poor season last year. They lost Chelsea Randall, their co-captain. Erin Phillips returned from ACL. They lost a couple other girls to ACLs. So this year they're all back and, you know, they're going to be, they're two-time premiership winners. Yeah, but their yeah. draw might be a little bit different to ours because we were more successful. So exactly right. if you play everybody once, it's not a problem. It don't, you know it, what I mean? Exa- exactly right. Exactly right. No, yeah, I, I, I fully agree. But, you know, that's the way it is it rumble is. sometimes. Yeah. It is what it is. And we'll play what's in front of us. And, you know, we've already seen a shift for round two. Like, we're no longer playing Frio over here. We've got Gold Coast. Um, you know, we've never played them, never had a look at them. So, yeah, it keeps it interesting. That's Very for sure. That's beautiful. Um, mm. just, before, just before we go, we've got a big game coming up on Thursday. Anything you want to say to the Collingwood faithful um, to get them, you know, we'll, we'll try and pack out that 9,000 uh, seats. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Look, we love your support, Luke, and we love the oh, supporters' <laughs> support as well. We do pay attention to that. Um, look, get down there. I think you have to pre-purchase tickets. $10 a ticket, free for kids. Um, if you're interested in getting a membership, it's 60 bucks. You can pay weekly if you need to, but that guarantees you access to all our home games. Thursday night's not our home game, but we'd love to outnumber the, <laughs> the Blues in, in the crowd. So, yeah, get on down. I've, it's going to be pretty fierce. Carlton have been touted as a, a premiership favourite. Um, so I think it's going to be a, a really, really good contest. Um, and, yeah, if it's anything like last year, it'll be feisty and um, exciting. So why not get on down and support us? But, yeah, we do appreciate the support you give us and we do notice it and we're really thankful. So thanks for that. Oh, amazing. No, thank you so much for, for coming on for this, for this chat, Steph. I really appreciate it. No worries. Anytime. Thanks for having me. No worries. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Will do. See you later. See ya. Bye. Bye.